This is part 17 in a series of videos in which I'm attempting to repair and restore this Madass mechanical calculator. In the previous videos I've repaired a number of mechanical faults and um, it's uh, finally getting to the point where it's starting to work. Uh, as you can see I've taken it back out of the outer case. I had to repair the drive motor, make of a drive belt. That's all working fine. Um, but I am now left with a uh, rather confusing problem that I think I'm finally starting to get to the bottom of. But I'll just explain um, what the problem is and uh, go from there and see if we can figure out how to resolve it. Anyone that's ever worked on uh, one of these calculators will know that um, they can be a bit of a pain and the thing that makes them most complex, especially the motor driven ones, is the automatic division function. And the reason it's so complicated is because it's a multi-mode process. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a few minutes. Now, luckily with these calculators, I have worked on quite a few in the past. And in the same way that if you're familiar with a car engine, then you can normally figure out what the bits do on another car engine, even if it's a different manufacturer, a different design. The parts fundamentally do the same thing in the same way. They're just a, a slightly different physical arrangement. But where it gets complicated is in the timing required to set these up. You've got this long gear train at the front and this is responsible for setting the uh, relative gear timing of the individual parts. When I got this machine it had been taken apart, it had various bits missing and it was in a fairly uh, sorry state. So I had to try and figure out how to reassemble it so that uh, all the timing worked. So uh, I also had some repairs to do on a couple of the drums which meant taking it fully apart anyway. What I normally do is mark all the gears before I do that but because this was all incorrectly timed to start with um, there was no point doing that. I was going to have to figure out how to get the timing right from scratch. So I went through all this and um, got the timing as close as I could and um, the main drums aren't too bad because they just need to be offset by one of the main gear teeth um, each so that each one lags behind the first one by one gear tooth and uh, if you get these wrong the machine will just lock up completely, it won't do anything. Um, because the machine can add and subtract reliably I'm fairly confident that the relative timing of all these is correct, that's relative to each other uh, however, there's always a possibility that they might be mistimed relative to the rest of the machine. Um, so that's what I've been looking at and that's where I initially assumed the existing fault was, but it turns out that's not the case. As I say, I'll explain what the fault is in a few minutes. Um, but what I did find eventually is that I went through and tried to figure out what the timing was and as I was doing that I was cleaning the machine and carrying out various repairs and the other timing issue is the timing between the um, add subtract part of the mechanism, that's the main drums, and the automatic division mechanism which is this secondary shaft running along here and then this uh, mechanism here. And this does vary from the um, manual hand driven machine because the motor driven machine has to cater for other things such as disengaging and stopping the motor and that's where a lot of the complication comes from working on this particular machine. Now, after I'd gone through and tried to figure out what the uh, timing should be, I happened to notice there were a couple of punch marks on the two gears down here when it was in its final finished process position, the two punch marks lined up. So uh, luckily I got that right. And then going down to the other end of the machine, there's a cam you can't quite see yet it's, uh, under here, some kind of a cam wheel that drives the automatic division function. And the gear that drives that, I noticed, had two punch marks on it and the gear on the main shaft, a single punch mark. And when I looked, uh, I found that the single punch mark was sitting between the two punch marks on the gear that drives the cam. So. Again, it looks like I had got that in the right position and because with the two punch marks at the main drive gear lined up, the two 
punch marks on the cam lined up so I was fairly confident I had the relative timing of the division and that's relative to the main drive gear correct but there's still no way of knowing if that uh, mechanism was correctly timed relative to all the drums and as I say that's what I thought the fault was but I'll show you what the machine's doing and um, we'll go from there I think I've fi finally figured out what's going on with this but I'll show you what it's doing so to do a division you select a column so let's do one column I'll do, do two columns you select a number that you want to divide and then the number you want to divide it by so I'll just uh, I haven't got a lower plate on a course so we'll just set a, an arbitrary number here I don't know what it will be and so we'll zero the center number so this will be the center number will contain the result when we're finished and the top number will uh, contain the remainder if it's not an exact uh, division ratio we'll now start the division so I'll press the plunger and I'm turning the gear I'm doing this by hand of course I don't have the motor engaged and we have this indicator wheel here that's currently showing zero this is used to show the um, the phase or the mode the machine is currently running in so division is nothing more than repeated subtractions so when it's just subtracting this lower number that's set from the number we want to divide it's showing zero and it will keep doing that up to the point where we get an underflow that is when um, we subtract the lower number from what's left of the top number and it goes below zero and then this indicator wheel will change so we can see the top number's going down it's now overflowing or rather underflowing and this mechanism has now gone into a different mode it's now showing two instead of zero so that's showing that it's underflowed what it needs to do now is recover from the underflow and it does this by adding the lower number back onto the top number and then this indicator wheel should change to a 1. Okay, it's now returned to a 1 and the machine will now advance the carriage to the next column and it will repeat the process. So it's going to do the same thing now subtracting the number repeatedly you probably can't see it but the top number is going down in increments equal to what's set on the bottom number and eventually as it's done here it will underflow this has gone back to a two it's recovering from the underflow and moving on to the next column so it's now got a one on the indicator wheel it's gone back to zero now what it should do now is continue the operation until we get another underflow at which point it should terminate the operation and it um, should pop the drive gear back up and it should stop the drive motor the drive motor is not here of course but it should still operate the lever that would switch the motor off and then although you can't see it the lever here that um, locks it into division mode should pop back down again what's happening is it's continuously cycling so it's underflow gone to a two recover from the underflow come back to zero but it just keeps doing this indefinitely which is obviously incorrect now in a previous video I showed that it was terminating the division and I'd done that as I explained by putting this um, indicator wheel into a location where it would terminate the division this indicator wheel has got a cam on the left hand side of it and that cam pushes this plate up um, but it only does that when the carriage is in the home position when it's fully across to the left there's a little you see the top of a screw here that pushes down on the end of this plate pushes it across that allows the cam on this indicator wheel to engage with this plate and then when this rotates it pushes this up and that is intended to terminate the division but it was only doing that with the indicator wheel in a particular position um, but the numbers were, obs were uh, showing incorrectly and someone did comment saying that uh, this was set wrong it was showing the wrong numbers which I was aware of I just set this in the only position in which the division would terminate um, but it was causing other problems and it was causing the division to terminate 
uh, prematurely, so it wasn't going through the entire process. With it in this position, I get the correct result for the division, and I get the correct remainder, but it just won't terminate the process. So I spent a lot of time looking at this and uh, couldn't quite figure out what was going on. There was, and I uh, initially assumed that the problem was the relative timing between the uh, main machine, the main drive shaft, and the uh, drums, the number drums. I thought there was a mismatch between the two, so I spent quite a lot of time kind of reverse engineering how this works to try and figure out what was going on. Now, because the machine was capable of successfully doing additions and subtractions, I had to assume that all the timing was correct. And because multiplication and division is nothing more than repeated additions and subtractions, then uh, this really has to be working. So that means we're back over here and the fault must lie in the control part. And that's what I started looking at. Uh, I'm going to move the camera and I'll slide the carriage out of the way and we'll have a look and I'll show you what I've found. I haven't fixed it yet, um, but hopefully it's uh, got me on the right track and I should be able to get this working now. Okay, so I need to get the carriage out of the way, but the first thing I have to do is get the division cycle to uh, finish. So I can make it do that by pushing the uh, division cancel button down and then continuing to turn the drive. So we'll just get it to cancel. So that's now popped the drive gear back up and the division has terminated. Now it should do that on its own, but it hasn't done. Notice that the indicator wheel is in the correct position. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get the carriage out of the way now. It bumps on these because the center uh, supports missing. So I need to make one of those that wasn't on the machine when I got it. And uh, now we're back working on this section, which is where the problem lies. Now, the way this is supposed to work is when the machine comes into the divide operation, and I'll now press the plunger down on the drive, and you'll see in this space here, you'll see a, uh, the end of a lever pop up, and this plate will capture it. So I'll push the plunger down. So what's happened now is we've got a lever popped up. It's got a hook on the end, and this plate is sitting underneath the hook. Now that latches it into division mode. And what's supposed to happen is when the end of division occurs, this plate gets pushed up and it causes the lever to pop back down again. Um, but of course it only does that in response to either the end of division lever being pressed down or the cam on this indicator wheel pushing the plate up. And as you can see, when the cam here pushes the plate up, it disengages the uh, lever and allows the division to terminate. The point at which this occurs is controlled in this position. The cam does not hit this lever, it goes into this recess here. I don't know how clear this is coming out on the camera. But when this uh, lever is pushed across, when the carriage comes back to the home position, you can see this section moves across and it allows the cam on the number wheel to uh, engage with this lever and then it presses this up and it terminates. Now I assume that this was kind of a, a dynamic thing and that uh, the cam came around, pressed this up and that's what immediately caused the division cycle to terminate. But that's not how it works, or it's not how it's supposed to work and it's not currently working at all. So what I'm going to do is take this plate off, we'll have a look underneath, and I'll show you what I think the problem is. So I get the spring out of the way. Get the two screws out. Get the plate out. Okay, so what we've got now is this arrangement where um, on the manual machine you have this and this, but you don't have this extra plate. This is just for the motorized version. But looking at this plate here, this is the plate. It's, it's very hard to see, but uh, this is the uh, plate and lever that's used to control termination of the uh, division cycle. And you can see this lever here, this end of this lever here is attached to it. But you can see this is just flopping about and it seemed to be under control of this lever and of course this lever 
is under control of this plate. But this lever can also raise this plate. So all three of these were interacting. And um, while I was looking at this, I was playing about with this for quite a long time and running it through uh, repeated divisions and uh, trying to figure out what's going on. And there's another uh, arrangement down here that's used to latch the machine into the different phases of the division, whether it's the subtraction, the underflow, or the uh, carriage advance phase. There's a spring here that's in theory supposed to lock this plate into position but it has a secondary function that's not working and I'll move the camera again and try to show you what's going on and where the fault lies. Okay, I've got you zoomed in. I don't know if this is going to come out on camera at all, but uh, this plate, or this lever, pivots about this point. And when I look to this in more detail, there's a post sticking out of it, just where the tip of the screwdriver now is. But it never touches anything and it's obviously there for a reason. Now whenever you get a mechanism like this and there's a post or a, a lever or something that appears to do nothing then something's wrong. They've obviously put it there for a reason. Now of course it might be that it's for a different model and um, it's not used in this particular model but I don't think that's the case. Now if we look further down again I don't think you'll be able to see this but there's a spring here you can just see the edge of it and that goes all the way down and there's a kind of a, a bent uh, portion of it at the end that seems to engage with this lever under here. But I think it's also supposed to engage with that little post. So I'll show you what I mean. If I try to move this lever up, you can see it's just flopping about, which although it's under control of this lever most of the time, as it is at the moment, there's nothing controlling it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is put the machine into a division mode and I'm going to drive it around to allow us to free up this uh, plate so it moves all the way up. At the moment it's not doing anything at all because it's, um, uh, it's being captive by the uh, particular mode of the division cycle. So I'll press the plunger down. I'll have to manually hold this into division now rotate the machine until we get to here and what we have now I can push this out of the way is this lever now moves over its full arc you see it's now going all the way, it was captive up to that point and stopped by this plate that's now rotated out of the way but this should not move all the way up but as you can see it's just flopping about now if I move this spring out very slightly you can see this becomes kind of in, it's almost like it's got an index and it pops into position and it pops back out but it's now captive in that position if I let go of the spring it's just flopping about again I'm not bending the spring very far probably a millimeter but the way this is working is the post that seems to do nothing is engaging with the end of the spring when I bend the spring out and it's making this captive so I think what's supposed to happen here is I think this is meant to be latched out so I put it back into its approximate position so this is attached to this plate and when the mechanism comes around and this gets pushed out I think what's supposed to happen is this lever is meant to be latched into its end of cycle position as it is here so it would sit like this and that means that when the cam then continues to rotate back to its home position this is still latched in the end of cycle so when the machine gets around to the point at which it will release the division this is still in the end of cycle and it causes the division to end at the moment because this just flops around I think it's just um, immediately going back down when the cam continues to rotate rather than this plate uh, being latched up into positions. So in other words I think what's supposed to happen is I think this mechanism is supposed to latch into the end of division and then when it gets around to the point in the cycle where the division should 
which should terminate, that's when it should terminate. Because it's not latching, I think it's just going past the cam, popping back down into the continued division um, mode, and it's just carrying on. So what I have to do is figure out how to make this work. Now, this uh, spring pressure is being countered by this spring. So what we have is we have this plate is normally screwed onto this plate. That's the one that we're trying to control. So it's normally screwed onto here. That's trying to pull this lever back down. Okay. And because it's trying to pull this lever back down, it means that it's trying to counter this index that we've just been looking at. And the amount it's trying to pull this back down is dependent on the strength of this spring. I don't think this is the right spring. So what we have to do is find a spring replacement for this that's the right tension that will hold it into division, but not so strong that it overcomes this indent. And then I've got to figure out uh, why this indent isn't working to start with, whether it's the spring is damaged or bent or broken. I can't see any adjustment for it, so um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I need to take this apart. What I'll do, I'll take this plate out so you can see it more clearly. So I take this screw out. This is the plate that has the spring attached to it. Okay, so this is the spring we're talking about, and hopefully you can see the post a bit more clearly now. It's this post down here that I think is supposed to engage and pass this point on the spring. You can see it's kind of a, a raised bump on here. Now, the lever that goes round sits on the inside of here. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be the case and whether or not this end of lip is meant to stop the lever flying out, which is what it seems to do. Um, but the post, I think, is meant to be controlled by this bump, and uh, it's not. So it might just be as simple as this needing to be bent out. Um, I can't see any obvious uh, damage to the spring. There doesn't seem to be any adjustment, although this screw does seem to be excessively large for uh, what it's doing. So whether or not there's something there, and there's meant to be some sort of adjustment, I'm not sure whether you're supposed to bend this lever. Um, there are no adjustments I can see. It just seems that it's um, a case of maybe you just bend the spring until it works. Um, but what I don't want to do is stop the spring from performing any other task. It seems a very kind of convoluted shape to do nothing else. So um, I'll need to have a look at this and figure out what's going on. But it needs to control this and that has to work in harmony with uh, whatever the tension of this spring will be. So I'll carry on working on this, but that's uh, how far I've got. I think I just need to get it to latch into the end of division mode, and then the machine should go through division and correctly terminate. Uh, if you've um, got any ideas on this, or if you've seen one of these actually working, uh, then please leave a comment.